Hello and welcome everybody to the Sassy Lass Craft Room. I am Erin Glenn and today I am participating in the Hello Harvest uh, Challenge and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. My first project is a cute fall garland. The first thing that I did was took this fall plaid fabric from the Dollar Tree and rip it into uh, roughly half inch strips. I didn't measure, I just cut a little piece at, at the end and then ripped the rest of it. And then I cut those into quarters. So um, quickest way I found to do it was fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then you just make the two snips that you saw me do there. For my twine, I like to, or whatever I'm using to hang it with, I like to have loops at each end, so that's what I started with, was just made a loop with the twine. And then you just start tying on your little rags, your little strips of fabric. Um, you see me kinda fussing with it. <laughs> um, I am trying to make sure that each side is as even as possible. And I do kinda, you know, twist and move them around so that um, overall the garland looks fuller and fluffier, I guess. And then I kind of push them into place. I don't tie them right next to each other. I move it over a little bit so that I don't accidentally tie up one of the other pieces of fabric. So next, I don't know why I did this in this order. <laughs> um, I painted my pumpkins. These came from a, um, look kind of like a tic-tac-toe board and it had well, not tic-tac-toe because there weren't nine. There were six, I think. Um, little wood cutouts from Michael's. So were there were the three different pumpkins that you see there, and then there were three different jack-o'-lanterns. And there were four of each one. So initially, I started out with six. And I really don't know why. Because <laughs> I am a uh, rule of odds person. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in a second. But I painted it with Waverly chalk paint um, in the, the orange, or I think it's actually called pumpkin. And um, I just did one side. You saw me there a second ago. I started to do the other side, and then I was like, wait, no, can't do that. I have to lay it down somewhere. And it'll get stuck to the paper. There's a lot of wait, no, when I did this project. Of course, I, I do that with all my projects, really. Um, so I just held on to the stem and painted it. And you see this uh, short little wide one, I kind of went through and loop through the center piece there. I didn't worry too much about painting any of that on any of the rest of them, but um, there was like a glob of paint. So, all right, so then I chose my beads. Um, I did two different sizes. And here I'm gonna kinda show you what I got going on here. I'm gonna do um, 10 uh, strips of fabric, smaller bead, larger bead, the pumpkin, larger bead, smaller bead. 10 strips of fabric, small, large, pumpkin, large, small bead, and so on and so forth. So here you saw that I cut out one of my pumpkins, because like I said, I'm a believer in the rule of odds. I think odd numbers just look better. So I narrowed it down to five, and by this point, I had narrowed it down to three, because I changed where I decided I wanted to hang it. <laughs> so then I, um, once I had all of my rags and my beads, um, I tied off another loop on the other end and picked the three pumpkins that I wanted. I decided that these, these are the little clasp, the spring from clothespins. And I keep all those when I take my clothespins apart to use them for something else. Had I been thinking, I could have um, strung the twine through the coil part and then hot glued the other part on there, but I didn't think ahead of time. so. Um, I'm having to do the opposite. I'm gluing the springy part on there, basically, the coil, and then going to clasp it with the other part. Um, I did leave. You saw I showed up close there. I left a little bit of a gap because I thought that would make it easier to open, uh, open this. I keep wanting to say spring, but that's really not right. <laughs> to open it, to put it on the twine. <laughs> So, of course, when I go to put this first one on, and I am recording, first time I've ever tried this, 
Um, first, I, you know, show you that you can fluff your fabric strips. Anyway, so at this point, I realized, well, it's not actually going to be that easy to just clip this on here. Um, it was just, it was just kind of awkward <laughs> and cumbersome, but you know, I did get it on there, but then wah, 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 <laughs> it just popped right off. Um, so I clipped that back on there and decided I'm just going to hot glue that while it's hanging there. Um, and then I realized I've already unplugged my hot glue gun. I don't know why I ever do that. Why do I ever un unplug my hot glue gun? Anyway, so I did get one on there and I had absolutely no problem with the other two. They both just clipped on there just fine. Stayed glued. Um, so it was just the one that was a problem. So really, overall, this did work out well. And it really wasn't that big of a deal to to clip it on there. I mean, sorry, to hot glue it on there <clears throat> after it's already been clipped. So it, it worked out well. Um, when it is hanging, and you'll see it in a second, you know, because of the way they are clipped on there, they do kind of want to hang to the side a little bit. So it, it probably wouldn't hurt to go back, um, if you are going to try this, to um, put just a little dot of hot glue on the back of that to keep it laying the way that you want to. Even though it is kind of floppy, I still think it turned out really cute. <laughs> and it does look cute with my Halloween stuff, but I think it's going to look even cuter when I put my just fall stuff back up. All right, as I said earlier, I am taking part in the Hello Harvest Hello. Challenge, and that's what my son has to say about that. It is hosted by Tammy from The Rusted Willow and Ellie from DIY From House to Home. It is monthly. Um, this month, it is uh, guest hosted by uh, Sons Arts. So be sure and check out their channels. I will have their channels linked below. So let's move on to my second and final craft for this video. Alrighty, so this one is probably going to seem rather silly to some people, but I saw it on Pinterest and I just thought it was too adorable and I will um, link that down below. Um, so the first thing, basically I'm going to make essentially a vase. Um, <laughs> the first thing I did in the pumpkin's still in there. I didn't want to open it with my can opener because I was afraid it would tear up the, um, the label because I need the label intact as much as possible. And that was a bit of a booger to get off. Um, so it's not perfect, but it's okay because, you know, oft times labels are not. So, um, once I got that out, I emptied out all the pumpkin and don't worry, I'm, I'm using the pumpkin. I'm not just tossing it. So, <laughs> Um, not being wasteful. Um, and then I'm going to Mod Podge the label back on there because basically I'm, I'm wanting to make this permanent. <laughs> um, so, you know, I did my layer of Mod Podge and all I, I, I have some regular somewhere, but I, of course, couldn't find it because I never can find what I'm looking for. But that is, it's for paper. So, I mean, I figured it was fine. I mean, how much different? Can the different types of Mod Podge be anyway? Um, so I, you know, did a, a decent layer on the can and then carefully put the label back on, try to make it as straight and neat and nice as possible, pressed it down as much as possible, uh, really gave a lot of attention to the seam. And then I went back over it with, um, Really, honestly, maybe too much Mod Podge, but I, I don't know. I think it's probably fine. Um, the only thing I will say is that I do kind of wish I had pressed it in a little bit more. Like, I, I wanted to see the little ridges of the can a little bit more. And, you know, get a little bit more adherence to the can. Is that a word? Adherence? I wanted it to adhere, adhere to the can. I initially really wanted to make this work. It's a bottle brush tree that I got from Walmart, but no. Okay, so this is the next day. Everything's all dry. Um, it's all stuck down pretty good, and I can see the ridges pretty well. Though, like I said, I kind of wish I had pressed in a little bit more. Like I said, I want it to last, so I'm going to take it outside and hit it with this clear sealer from 
color shot inside and out. Okay, so fill it up. <laughs> I do wish that I had uh, put rocks at the bottom first or something to give it some weight at the bottom for a little bit of stability, but I didn't. So, um, it, I mean, it's going to be fine. It'll stand up, but it, it would have been better. And then I put um, the little floral spongy thing uh, down at the bottom and then just kind of started shoving stuff in there. Floral arranging really is not in my skill set. I'm not a florist. <laughs> um, so just did the best I could with what I had. I really didn't want to spend any more money either. So I already had those two uh, like berry picks from Hobby Lobby. I think they were a dollar each. Uh, the florals were from one big piece from Walmart. It was like six or seven dollars that I've cut up and used in other projects. And then the pumpkins come from Dollar Tree. And, um, I mean, it's, that's just kind of it. <laughs> uh, like I said, did the best I could. I'm not really, floral arranging just really isn't my thing. So, I mean, I think it turned out just fine. But I know, you know, there are plenty of other people who, who could have done better. <laughs> I did realize as I was filming this part that it is a little bit high. There's a gap there. So, I am going to have to go back and fix that. But overall, considering floral arranging isn't really my thing, I think it did turn out really pretty. All right, well, that is it for today. I really, and my son says bye-bye. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed them. I hope that they inspire you to create something similar. Um, and if you like this video, then go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment or a question below. And... If you've not already, I would love it if you would become a subscriber and be sure to hit that bell. Also, be sure to check out my link tree. It is in the description box so that you can see where else to find me. Have a good evening and I hope to see you next time.